Hi, everybody. My name is John Emmons. I lead the Autopilot Vision team. I'm going to cover two topics with you today. The first is how we predict lanes, and the second is how we predict the future behavior of other agents on the road. In the early days of Autopilot, we modeled the lane detection problem as an image space instant segmentation task. Our network was super simple, though. In fact, it was only capable of predicting lanes from a, of a few different kinds of geometries. Specifically, it would segment the eagle lane, it could segment adjacent lanes, and then it had some special casing for forks and merges. This simplistic modeling of the problem worked for highly structured roads like highways. But today, we're trying to build a system that's capable of much more complex maneuvers. Specifically, we want to make left and right turns at intersections, where the road topology can be quite a bit more complex and diverse. When we try to apply this simplistic modeling of the problem here, it just totally breaks down. Taking a step back for a moment, what we're trying to do here is to predict the sparse set of lane instances and their connectivity. And what we want to do is to have a neural network that basically predicts this graph, where the nodes are the lane segments, and the edges encode the connectivities between these lanes. So what we have is our lane detection neural network. It's made up of three components. In the first component, we have a set of convolutional layers, attention layers, and other neural network layers that encode the video streams from our eight cameras on the vehicle and produce a rich visual representation. We then enhance this visual representation with a coarse uh, road, metal, road level map data, which we encode with a set of additional neural network layers that we call the lane guidance module. This map is not an HD map, but it provides a lot of useful hints about the topology of lanes instead of intersections, the lane counts on various roads, and a set of other attributes that help us. The first two components here produce a dense tensor that sort of encodes the world. But what we really want to do is to convert this dense tensor into a sparse set of lanes and their connectivities. We approach this problem like an image captioning task, where the input is this dense tensor, and the output text is predicted into a special language that we developed at Tesla for encoding lanes and their connectivities. In this language of lanes, the words and tokens are the lane positions in 3D space. In the ordering of the tokens, and predicted modifiers in the tokens encode the connective relationships between these lanes. By modeling the task as a language problem, we can capitalize on recent autoregressive architectures and techniques from the language community for handling the multimodality of the problem. We're not just solving the computer vision problem at Autopilot. We're also applying the state of the art in language modeling and machine learning more generally. I'm now going to dive into a little bit more detail of this language component. What I have depicted on the screen here is a satellite image which sort of represents the local area around the vehicle. The set of nodes and edges is what we refer to as the lane graph, and it's ultimately what we want to come out of this neural network. We start with a blank slate. We're going to want to make our first prediction here at this green dot. This green dot's position is encoded as an index into a coarse grid which discretizes the 3D world. Now, we don't predict this index directly, because it would be too computationally expensive to do so. There's just too many grid points, and predicting a categorical distribution over this has both implications at training time and test time. So instead, what we do is we discretize the world coarsely first. We predict a heat map over the possible locations, and then we latch in the most probable location. Condition on this, we then refine the prediction and get the precise point. Now, we know where the position of this token is, but we don't know its type. In this case, though, it's the beginning of a new lane. So we predict it as a start token. And because it's a start token, there's no additional attributes in our language. We then take the predictions from this first forward pass, and we encode them using a learned positional embedding, which produces a set of tensors that we can bind together, which is actually the first word in our language of lanes. We add this to the you know, first position in our sentence here. We then continue this process by predicting the next lane point in a similar fashion. Now, this lane point is not the beginning of a new lane. It's actually a continuation of the previous lane. So it's a continuation token type. Now, it's not enough just to know that this lane is connected to the previously predicted lane. We want to encode its precise geometry, which we do by regressing a set of spline coefficients. We then take this lane, we encode it again, and add it as the next word in the sentence. We continue predicting these continuation lanes until we get to the end of the prediction grid. We then move on to a different lane segment. So you can see that cyan dot there. Now, it's, it's not topologically connected to that pink point. It's actually forking off of that 
that, per, that blue, sorry, that green point there. So it's got a fork type. And fork tokens actually point back to previous tokens from which the fork originates. So you can see here the fork point predictor is actually the index 0. So it's actually referencing back to tokens that it's already predicted, like you would in language. We continue this process over and over again until we've enumerated all of the tokens in the link graph. And then the network predicts the end of sentence token. Yeah, I just want to note that, um, that the, the reason we do this is not just because we want to build something complicated. It almost feels like a Turing complete machine here with neural networks, though. Uh, is that we tried simpler approaches, for example, uh, trying to just segment the lanes uh, along the road or something like that. But then the problem is when there's uncertainty. Say you cannot uh, see the road clearly, and there could be two lanes or three lanes, and you can't tell. A simple segmentation-based approach would just draw both of them. It's kind of a 2.5 lane situation. And the post-processing algorithm would hilariously fail uh, when the predictions are such. Yeah, and the problems yeah. don't end there. I mean, you need to predict these connective, like these connective lanes inside of intersections, which it's just not possible with the approach that Ashok's mentioning, which is why we had to upgrade to this sort yeah, of Yeah, when it like, overlaps like this, segmentation would just go haywire. But even if you try very hard to you know, put them on separate layers, it's just a really hard problem. But language just offers a really nice framework for more getting a uh, sample from a posterior as opposed to you know, uh, trying to do all of this in post-processing. But this doesn't actually stop for just autopilot, right, John? This can be used for optimists. Yeah, you know, I guess they wouldn't be called lanes, but you could imagine, you know, sort of in this, you know, stage here, that you might have sort of paths that sort of, you know, encode the possible places that people could walk. Yeah, basically, if you're in a factory or in a, um, you know, home setting, you can just ask the robot, okay, let's me, well, please route to the kitchen or please route to some location in the factory, and then we predict a set of pathways that would, you know, go through the aisles, take the robot, and say, okay, this is how you get to the kitchen. It just really gives us a nice framework to model these different paths that simplify the navigation problem for the downstream planner. All right, so ultimately what we get from this lane detection network is a set of lanes and their connectivities, which comes directly from the network. There's no additional step here for sparsifying these you know, dense predictions into, into, into sparse ones. This is just the direct unfiltered output of the network. OK, so I talked a little bit about lanes. I'm going to briefly touch on how we model and predict the future paths and other semantics on objects. So I'm just going to go really quickly through two examples. The video on the right here, we've got a car that's actually running a red light and turning in front of us. Um, what we do to handle situations like this is we predict a set of short time horizon future trajectories on all objects. Um, we can use these to anticipate the dangerous situation here and apply whatever you know, braking and steering actions required to avoid a collision. In the video on the right, there's two vehicles in front of us. Um, the one in the left lane is parked. Uh, apparently, it's being loaded, unloaded. I don't know why the driver decided to park there. Um, but the important thing is that our neural network predicted it, that it was stopped, um, which is the red color there. Um, the vehicle in the other lane, as you notice, also is stationary. But that one's obviously just waiting for that red light to turn green. So even though both objects are stationary and have zero velocity, it's the semantics that is really important here so that we don't get stuck behind that awkwardly parked car. Predicting all of these agent attributes presents some practical problems when trying to build a real-time system. We need to maximize the frame rate of our object detection stack so that Autopilot can quickly react to the changing environment. Every millisecond really matters here. To minimize the inference latency, our neural network is split into two phases. In the first phase, we identify the locations in 3D space where agents exist. In the second stage, we then pull out tensors at those 3D locations, append it with additional data that's on the vehicle, and then we you know, do the rest of the processing. This sparsification step allows the neural network to focus compute on the areas that matter most, which gives us superior performance for a fraction of the latency cost. So putting it all together, the autopilot vision stack predicts more than just the geometry and kinematics of the world. It also predicts a rich set of semantics, which enables safe and human-like driving. I'm now going to hand things off to Sri, who will tell us how we run all these cool neural networks on our FSD computer. Thank you. Thanks, John.